Well, welcome to this service of remembrance. Tonight, we're gathered with each other in spirit, uh, just as Jesus is with us in spirit as well. You know, he gathered with the disciples on their last night together and shared the Passover meal. It was the night that he was betrayed. Tonight, we're going to reflect together. We're going to pray together. We're going to break bread together. And we'll take the top cup together as Christ has commanded us to do. But as we do this, as we come together uh, in spirit, uh, and particularly on uh, this night, we are reminded of the passion that is before us, what Jesus did on uh, that Good Friday, the death on the cross. And the reason for that is because of our sin. And so I think it's important for us uh, as we enter into this time together as the, the body of Christ to uh, come together with a humbled heart and also a heart of confession and repentance. And so I invite you to join me now in this time of prayer. Lord, you are merciful and loving. You alone are holy and just. You sent your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. God, we confess that we have neglected you. We have neglected your word. We have not obeyed your commands. And so we ask now, Heavenly Father, in this time of silence, that you would hear these our confessions. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. For we know that you are gracious and compassionate on all that you have created, including us. Father, as we've confessed our sins, we also confess the truth of your word. You said that if we confess our sins, that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We come before you with humbled hearts, asking, O oh Father, for your forgiveness. Not only do we ask for forgiveness, but we repent of our sins. Cleanse us, Lord, and we will be clean. Restore to us the joy of our salvation and renew a right spirit within us. We need you, Jesus, and we love you. Thank you for loving us first. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, I want you to be sure to know, even in, as we pray this prayer of confession, that God reaches out to us. He reaches out to heal us and to reveal again to us his love, that love that will never let us go. And so we're able to celebrate, even in a somber way tonight, this precious gift that God has given us. We are able to know from the, in the depths of our being that we are truly forgiven. So let us respond to God's love with our praise uh, with our devotion, as well as with our commitment to serve one another. Join us now as we worship in song. And the Holy Spirit also testifies that this is so. First, he says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on th that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts so they will understand them. And I will write them on their minds so they will obey them. Then he adds, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. Now when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. And so, dear friends, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. This is the new life-giving way that Christ has opened up for us through the sacred curtain by means of his death for us. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's people, let us go right into the presence of God with true hearts, fully trusting Him. For our evil consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Without wavering, let us hold tightly to the hope we say we have. For God can be trusted to keep His promise. Think of ways to encourage one another to outbursts of love and good deeds. 
And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near. Thank you, Mason. Mason read from Hebrews 10, verses 16 through 25. And I want to just touch on a couple of things that I think are important for us tonight as we uh, remember Christ's uh, passion and death tomorrow. Uh, and as he walked the disciples through the, the Seder meal, through the Passover meal on uh, what we celebrate as Monday Thursday, uh, Mason asked me just before we began this, what does Monday mean? And uh, it comes from the Old English from a, a translation or transliteration of the term remembering. Uh, and it's an important aspect of us doing what Christ commanded us to do by remembering his death. Uh, through the, the bread and the cup itself. But as we do that, it raises for us some questions that I think are really important. And this is what we see in the passage here in Hebrews, uh, where the writer of Hebrews is talking about the new covenant that Christ gives us. And with that new covenant comes the understanding that we have to be cleansed. And so we can question, are, are we really cleansed? And where does that cleansing come from? It's said in, in, verses, or in verse 22, Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting Him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. You see, friends, it's an amazing thing when we stop to really consider what the Scriptures teach us about what Christ did for us on the cross. That through His blood we are made new, that we are cleansed from our sins. We no longer have to live underneath that uh, burden uh, of sin. It also raises a question when we look at verse 23, am I committed? Am I living out this commitment? It says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us hold tightly without wavering, it says. Let us remember that this gift has been given to us and that it should be that which defines our life and how we live and interact with one another and with the world. And then it raises the question for us of fellowship. And I know right now that even becomes more of an important question as we are uh, having to, to socially distance ourselves from one another. It says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another. And so we're finding new ways to do that. And this is one of those ways. And I'm hoping that you're able to be sitting around the table with family, uh, maybe with a friend or two, uh, in order to celebrate this meal together. Because it's an important part. And, and particularly as Anabaptists, we recognize the importance of community and the need that we have for one another and to meet together, to encourage one another, to build one another up. And uh, so on a night like this, and particularly when we're not able to be together, uh, it's an important thing for us to remember. And so what are some new ways that we can be reaching out uh, to one another, whether it be through text or through phone calls? Um, last night on Wednesday evening, we held a Zoom meeting with a number of uh, folks from the church uh, just to have prayer together. And so it's another way that we can communicate and be together uh, to remain in fellowship. And boy, what a, what a day of celebration it's going to be when we're able to come back together on a Sunday morning. And finally, uh, in verse 26, which, which Mason didn't read for us, it says this, Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. And so it raises the question, am I really seeing a change in my life? In other words, have I really given myself to Christ so that I'm no longer a slave to sin, but instead that I begin to experience the new life of Christ in me? When we partake of the bread and of the cup together, we're declaring the newness of Christ in us, the resurrection power uh, of, of Jesus Christ. And so it begins to transform who we are and how we see ourselves in relationship to, again, God's world and to one another. And so tonight, as we uh, prepare to take the bread and the cup together, uh, let us remember these things. Have I been cleansed? Yes, I've been cleansed through the blood of Christ. Am I committed? Yes, I'm committed to Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I'm committed to His church. There's fellowship that we're able to partake in. And I'm allowing Christ to make me a new person each and every day. Going to 
go ahead and, and transition now to hearing the story of the um, Passover meal. And we'll have Malachi and Tanya read that for us from Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Okay. The festival of unleavened bread, which begins with the Passover celebration, was drawing near. The leading priests and teachers of religious law were actively plotting Jesus' murder, but they wanted to kill him without starting a riot, a possibility they greatly feared. Then Satan entered into Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve disciples, and he went over to the leading priests and captains of the temple guard to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted that he was ready to help them, and they promised him a reward. So he began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus so they could arrest him quietly when the crowds were not around. Now the festival of unleavened bread arrived when the Passover lambs were sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead and said, Go and prepare the Passover meal so we can eat together. Where do you want us to go? they asked him. And he replied, As soon as you enter Jerusalem, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him at the house he enters. Say to the owner, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is the place. Go ahead and prepare our supper there. So they went off to the city and found everything just as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover supper there. Then at the proper time, Jesus and the twelve apostles sat down together at the table, and Jesus said, I have looked forward to this hour with deep longing, anxious to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I will tell you now that I won't eat it again until it comes to fulfill meant, meant in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks for it, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had thanked God for it, he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This wine is the token of God's new covenant to save you an agreement sealed with the blood I will pour out on out for you. But here at this table sitting among us as a friend is the man who will betray me. For I, the Son of Man, must die since it is part of God's plan. But how terrible it will be for my betrayer. Then the disciples began to ask each other which of them would ever do such a thing. And they began to argue among themselves as to who would be the greatest in the coming kingdom. Jesus told them, In this world the kings, the great men, order their people around, and yet they are called friends of the people. But among you those who are greatest should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Normally the master sits at the table and is served by his servants, but not here, for I am your servant. You have reminded, Remain. remained true to me in my time of trial, and just as my father has granted me a kingdom, I know Grant, I, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in the kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. All right. Thank you very much. Let us worship in song now.
let us break bread together. So again, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, they were having the Passover meal. And as they sat around, he was taking the elements that they were very familiar with that were a part of telling the Passover story. And we recognize that Jesus becomes the fulfillment of these things that the Jews had been celebrating for 2,000 years and that they continue to celebrate today. And they don't always recognize how he is the one that completely fulfilled those very things. And so he took the bread and he broke it and he passed it to the disciples and he said that this is my body that is broken for you. So I invite you now to take the bread and let's partake in this together. We recognize that Jesus' body was truly broken for our sins. It should have been our death and our brokenness, but he took that and received it upon himself so that we might have life and wholeness. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your willingness to sacrifice yourself on our behalf, your body broken, that we might be made whole. Help us to remember tonight the fullness of this gift and may it truly settle deeply within us so that we might be transformed from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is my body, Christ said, broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. Let us eat, dear friends. In the same way that night, he took the cup, the cup of the covenant. And he said that it would be symbolic of his blood that was poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And in the passage in Luke, he specifically says, too, that it is now the cup of the new covenant. This new covenant, friends, is significant because we become grafted into what God has been doing from the very beginning. We become a part of this amazing story to know that we are now a part of this covenant with God when we say yes to Jesus Christ, that because of his blood, we are able to enter into the holy of holies, as the writer of Hebrews says, that we are made right, that, the, that our sins are forgiven. And so as we drink this evening, remember the significance of this gift. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you. We thank you that you have made a way for us through your son, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your willingness to so willingly go to the cross that you received upon yourself the punishment that was rightly ours. And for that blood that was shed, the blood of the new covenant that makes us as white as snow. What a precious gift it is. And may we never forget in Jesus' name, amen. Jesus took the cup and said, this is the blood of Christ shed for you, the cup of the new covenant. Drink this in remembrance of me, he said. Drink, beloved, drink. Again, Father, we thank you for the precious gift we remember this night all that you have done for us through your son, Jesus, and all that you continue to do in our midst. Mm -hmm. Lord, though we aren't able to gather together, we feel closer to one another simply because of the presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. Draw our hearts together and help us, Father, wherever we are, to bring glory and honor to you in all that we say and all that we think and all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday is coming. It's Friday. 
pilots struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sunday's come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirit's burdened. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning and evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won. Sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laughing. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming.